not understand? After the story I told you today, Jesus has a confrontation with the Pharisees and the Herodians, and then he has a confrontation with the disciples. And he ends his confrontation with the disciples by asking that question. Do you not understand? So what is it Jesus thinks that the disciples don't understand? What is it that he believes that they don't get, that they don't comprehend, that they cannot perceive, that they do not see, that they can't hear? So that question is directly related to our story. Our story is about feeding people. Jesus on the other side of the lake in Gentile territory, in the place where there are Romans, where there are people of different nationalities, where there are close neighbors who we dislike, where there are enemies. Jesus has been traveling this region healing and preaching. And they are out in the wilderness now. And Jesus looks around and sees that all those people that have been following him are hungry. And he has compassion on them. And he says, we need to feed them. And the disciples say, how can we feed them in the wilderness? So I want you to stop there. Because who did we just study before we went to Mark? We were in Exodus studying Moses, right? And what does Moses do in the desert? In the wilderness? Away from towns and villages? What does Moses and God do there in the desert? He feeds people over and over again. Every day manna appears. And so, in your head, right? You got the disciples. They're in the desert. And they say, how can we feed people? Now, the other part they didn't understand is we started this sermon series with the other feeding, right? The feeding that was in Israel on the other side of the Sea of Galilee with, with the 5,000 Israelites who Jesus had broken bread, blessed it, and shared it. And everyone ate until they were full. And then we had the discussion about what does it mean to be full, to be clean, to be unclean, to have enough. And Jesus argued with a woman about what does it mean to have enough. And she argued back that even I deserve crumbs. And so today, he is there with all the people that he said only deserved crumbs. Having his heart full of compassion, wanting to feed them. And that's why the disciples don't understand. They don't get it. They have not given their heart in the way that Jesus wants them to. They have not turned over their lives in the way that he has been teaching them. Do you not understand? They don't understand about loaves. Because in the scripture that directly follows this, when Jesus is confronted by the religious leaders and the political leaders of the day, they want him, get this, to perform a sign they are out in the middle of the desert. He has just fed 4,000 people. I think maybe he'd already given them a sign. In fact, where they're asking him to give them a sign, they should be seeing that he is in fact a symbol like Moses, a new person who comes and is able to be the person that people need to bring them liberation. And like Moses, there in the desert, he fed them. Do you not understand? I mean, Mark wants to make
make it real clear here that you will know that this is what God is asking for us to transform how we think about what we have, what we own, what other people deserve. Because in the first story, when they collect up all the food, Mark makes it very clear that this is about the people of Israel. The words he uses, the numbers of baskets of food that are collected, it all symbolizes Israel. It symbolizes the 12 tribes. It symbolizes the basket, which is a word from Hebrew. Then we get to today's story, and Mark wants it to be really clear that those crumbs, that that kingdom where loaves are enough for everyone, isn't just about Israel anymore. It is about the entire people of the earth. That the gospel has been open to everyone, and everyone deserves to have enough. And so in this telling of the story, we have the number seven, which symbolizes wholeness and completeness. And the word that is used to collect those fish, those loaves into a basket, is not a Hebrew word this time. It's a word from the dominant culture, from the Gentiles. It is a word to symbolize that this Loaf, this enough is for everyone. Do you not understand yet? So after Jesus says to the disciples as an aside when he ignores the religious leaders and the political leaders by just like sighing, because what can you say after you have performed the sign that they were asking for? He says as an aside, do not be swayed by the leaven of the religious leaders. Do not be swayed by the leaven of the Herodians, the political leaders. Remember what God can do. God can take those crumbs at the table and provide enough for everyone. So then they get in a boat so that they can go back to the other side of the lake, back to Israel. And when they get in the boat, the disciples start arguing. They start arguing, and it's not as clear in the English text as it is in the um, Greek text. Because in the English text, it looks like they're arguing over the same amount of loaves. But in the Greek, it goes from being plural, we don't have enough loaves to feed ourselves, to there's only one loaf. And that one loaf is symbolic, right? Because Jesus can take that one loaf and everyone will have enough. Everyone will have enough. So the disciples are there arguing over this one loaf, saying it is not enough to feed them. They've just eaten, right? Like they've just eaten. And now they're in the boat and they want more food. And one loaf is not enough and they're arguing over it. And Jesus says, all right, I'll give you a lesson. What happened with the 4,000 people? How many people did we feed? How many loaves did we have? Was there enough? And what just happened with the people that we just fed? How many people were there? How many loaves were there? How much was left over? Do you not understand yet? They didn't understand, they didn't get it. They didn't see what it was that Jesus needed them to experience. They didn't understand what the new kingdom looked like. For we learned 
in the story today that their hearts were hardened. But their eyes were blind. Their eyes were blind, but they couldn't see. And they weren't able to speak about what had happened. They did not get it. Do you not understand yet? For us, what these stories of Mark are trying to teach us is that there is enough. There is enough for everyone to be satisfied. But we have created structures and economies and political systems that make it so everyone can't have enough. And us, as Christians, are invited to see the world differently. To see the world as a place with abundance. To see that everyone is invited to the table and everyone will be satisfied. Do you not understand yet? Amen.